Pink Floyd is one of the most iconic and influential rock bands of all time, who are known for their live performances and psychedelic sound. How they got their name is a tale of inspiration and a little bit of luck that resulted in one of the most iconic names in music history. In the early 1960s, a group of musicians from London were making a name for themselves in the underground music scene. Sid Barrett, Richard Wright, Roger Waters and Nick Mason had been playing together for some time, but they were still searching for the perfect name for their band. The band struggled to find a name that truly captured their sound and style. Early on before the band formation and its original lineup, they were called Sigma Six, which was made up of a group of students studying at the London Polytechnic. Later on, as members left and others joined, they became the Mega Deaths, a name inspired by a term used in the Cold War to describe a hypothetical nuclear explosion that could kill millions of people. And yes, it was not exactly the most uplifting name for a band. Other names included the Abdabs and the Screaming Abdabs, Leonard's Lodgers, and the Spectrum 5. The band then decided to change their name to something else, the T-Set. But as it turns out, there was already another band out there with that name. At this point, they were running out of time. They had started to gain lots of fans and had gigs scheduled, but no name to perform under. But as fate would have it, Sid Barrett who was the band's lead guitarist and primary songwriter, had a stroke of genius. He had been listening to a lot of blues music lately and was particularly inspired by two musicians. They were Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. He then combined each of their first names and the name Pink Floyd was born. Pink Anderson and Floyd Council were both influential blues musicians in the 20th century. By choosing those names, Sid Barrett was paying homage to the roots of rock and roll. Pink Anderson was born in South Carolina in 1900 and grew up in a family of musicians. He learned to play the guitar and the harmonica, and his unique style drew on a wide range of musical traditions, including country and gospel. Anderson's early career was marked by extensive touring, and he became known for his soulful voice and his ability to tell vivid stories through his music. Floyd Council, on the other hand, was born in North Carolina in 1911 and learned to play the guitar from his father. He began performing in his teens and quickly gained a reputation as a skilled musician. Council's music was deeply rooted in the blues tradition, and he was known for his powerful vocals and his mastery of the slide guitar. What made Anderson and Council particularly influential was their ability to fuse different musical styles together. Both musicians drew on a wide range of influences, from African rhythms to Appalachian folk music, and they were constantly experimenting with new sounds and techniques. Their music was a bridge between the old world of traditional blues and the new world of rock and roll, and it helped pave the way for future generations of musicians. It's no surprise then, that Sid Barrett the founder of Pink Floyd, was drawn to Anderson and Council's music. Barrett was a visionary musician who was always on the lookout for new sounds and ideas, and he recognized the power and innovation in Anderson and Council's music. By combining their names, Barrett created a new moniker that was both memorable and meaningful, and it became one of the most iconic names in rock history. At first, the other band members weren't too keen on the name. They thought it was too weird and didn't really make sense. But as they continued to play and perform together, something interesting started to happen. The name began to take on a life of its own and it became a kind of shorthand for the band's sound and attitude, a way of capturing their unique blend of psychedelic sounds and rock and roll. As they played more gigs and got more exposure, the name grew on them. They started to embrace it as their own and eventually Pink Floyd became their permanent name. Over time, the band members came to appreciate the name for what it was, a bold and distinctive statement of their artistic vision. They realized that it didn't matter whether the name made sense on a literal level. What mattered was that it captured the essence of their music and their creative spirit. It represented their willingness to push boundaries, take risks and to explore new sonic territory. It was a name that stood out from the crowd and was quite memorable. Of course it wasn't always easy being Pink Floyd. The band faced plenty of challenges and setbacks over the years, from personal conflicts to creative struggles and even legal disputes that almost led to them breaking up for good. But through it all, the name Pink Floyd remained a constant source of inspiration and motivation. It's interesting to think that such an iconic name came from the combination of two relatively unknown blues musicians. But that's often how creativity works. Sometimes the best ideas come from unexpected sources. But beyond just the name, Pink Floyd's legacy is a testament to the power of creativity and innovation in music. They were pioneers in the use of technology and sound effects, pushing the boundaries of what was possible. Their music has stood the test of time and has inspired countless fans and musicians and still continues up to this day.